Good evening everyone. In this video we will see about cranial nerve anatomy. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves of which the first and second that is olfactory and uh, optic nerve arise from the telencephalon and diencephalon respectively. Whereas the third and fourth cranial nerves that is the uh, oculomotor and the trochlear nerve arise from midbrain. The middle four cranial nerves that is 5, 6, 7 and 8 originate from the pons. Whereas the last final four cranial nerves that is 9, 10, 11, 12 nerves originate from the medulla. Here are the anatomic segments of the cranial nerves with the surrounding tissue. Initially is the nuclear segment, then the parenchymal fa fascicular segment. Then comes the cisternal segment which we see usually on a Fiesta sequence of MRI. Then comes the dural cave segment, then the interdural segment and finally foraminal and extra foraminal segments. Coming to the first cranial nerve that is olfactory nerve, it consists of white matter tracts which enter the uh, anterior cranial fossa through the cribriform plate and terminate in the olfactory bulb and then courses between the gyrus rectus and medial orbital gyrus. It provides innervation for the sense of smell. It can often be seen on axial MRI of the brain at the level of temporal lobes. The second cranial nerve is the optic nerve. It emerges from the posterior pole of the globe and has four segments which includes the intraocular segment, then the intraorbital segment, the intracanalicular segment which runs in the optic canal and the intracranial segment. The optic chiasm is immediately superior to the pituitary gland and supracellular system. So from the optic chiasma, the optic tract courses posteriorly. It courses posteriorly along the cerebral peduncles and synapses at the lateral geniculate nuclei. From there, optic radiation reaches the primary visual cortex in the occipital lobe. Here is a Fiesta image showing the segments of the optic nerve and the optic chiasm. The third cranial nerve is the oculomotor nerve. The nerve emerges from the interpeduncular cistern at the level of superior colliculus, running through the perimesencephalic cistern between the posterior cerebral artery and the superior cerebellar artery and then enters the cavernous sinus. It controls the striated muscle in the levator palpebrae superioris and all extraocular muscles except the superior oblique which is supplied by the fourth cranial nerve and the lateral rectus which is supplied by the sixth cranial nerve. Fourth nerve, the trochlear nerve is a unique as it is the smallest cranial nerve with the longest intracranial course and the only cranial nerve to exit the brainstem posteriorly. After exiting the pons, the nerve curves over the superior cerebellar peduncle and then it courses anteriorly between the superior cerebellar artery and the posterior cerebral artery lateral to the third cranial nerve. Successively, it runs along the free margin of the tentorium and then enters the cavernous sinus and then orbit through the superior orbital fissure. Then the fifth nerve or the trigeminal nerve is the thickest and the largest cranial nerve which extends from the midbrain down to the upper cervical medulla. It emerges straight forward from the lateral pons and passes in the Meckel's cave which from which the nerve splits into three subdivisions the ophthalmic, maxillary and the mandibular divisions. The ophthalmic division exits the skull via the superior orbital fissure, the maxillary division via the foramen rotundum and the mandibular division via the foramen ovale. The sixth cranial nerve or the abducens nerve here it emerges from the abducens nucleus which is located just beneath the floor of the fourth ventricle in the dorsal pons and courses anteriorly to exit the brainstem at the pontomedullary junction. Successively, it descends to the near to the posterior aspect of the clivus, passing through the dorelos canal and enters in the cavernous sinus and then the orbit via the superior orbital fissure. So here is an image showing the cavernous sinus which is located on either side of the pituitary fossa and the body of the sphenoid. So the contents which are within the cavernous sinus are the internal carotid artery and the sixth cranial nerve. The structures in the lateral wall include the third nerve, fourth nerve, ophthalmic and the maxillary divisions of the fifth nerve. The seventh nerve or the facial nerve. The motor nucleus of the facial nerve is located in the lower portion of the pons and motor fibers exit from the lateral portion of the pontomedullary sulcus. Successively it travels the CP angle system and then enters the temporal bone through the internal acoustic meatus. So here is a zoomed CT temporal bone video showing the internal acoustic meatus and the canalicular segment and the labyrinthine segment which then makes a genu and the tympanic segment of the facial nerve. Then the mastoid segment in the mastoid bone here 
then which exits the skull base through the stylomastoid foramen the eighth nerve or the vestibular cochlear nerve it is formed by two nerves the cochlear and the vestibular nerve both nerves traverse the internal acoustic meatus together with the facial nerve and pass in the cp angle system in the internal acoustic meatus the nerves are so placed such that the facial nerve is antero superior the cochlear nerve is antero inferior superior vestibular nerve is postero superior and the inferior vestibular nerve is postero inferior so here is an easy way to remember the seven up which means the seventh cranial nerve is upwards and the coke down which means the cochlear nerve is inferior these are the ninth and tenth nerves the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves both of which emerge from the lateral medulla into the lateral cerebellum medullary cistern and exits the skull through the jugular foramen the eleventh or the accessory nerve here it has both cranial and spinal roots cranial roots emerge into the lateral cerebellum medullary cistern while the spinal roots emerge from the upper cervical segment of the spinal cord and pass superiorly through the foramen magnum into the cisterna magna the last or the 12th hypoglossal nerve here it emerges from the lateral medulla as a series of rootlets extending from the ventrolateral sulcus of the medulla into the lateral cerebellum medullary cistern the nerve exits the skull through the hypoglossal canal and then runs medial to the 9th 10th and 11th cranial nerves thank you